Welcome to Commander's Training Camp 2022. We have you covered every day of camp from the team's facility here in Ashburn. And today, a light day for the players as they are just in their jerseys in the bubble. But we are bringing you this exclusive coverage of practice, interviews with your favorite players, and access like you will not find anywhere else. Now, coming up on today's show, well, quarterback Carson Wentz continues to get more familiar with his teammates. He has a lot of weapons at his disposal here in Washington. What does he need to do to level up this offense? How much will we see him in the preseason? We will discuss. And defensive back William Jackson III stops by the set to talk about how the defense is coming together, how he is matching up against guys like Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson. And he has strong feelings about one-on-one -on -one drills. We will show you and bring that to you. We put a mic on head coach Ron Rivera as he gets his team ready for action. We're going to show you that and tell you how you can see Coach Rivera and the team in person this weekend. It's the closest you can get to camp without actually being here, and we are bringing it all to you right now in Command Center. Camp coverage presented by the inaugural Commander's Fan Cruise, setting sail March 26, 2023. Reserve your spot at www.commandersfancruise.com. And this is exclusive access to Washington Commander's training camp at the park here in Ashburn, Virginia. It's a recovery day for the team, well needed, well deserved, as they are back in just jerseys out in the practice bubble. We will be showing you look-ins at what is happening here in practice throughout our show. And welcome on in, Julie Donaldson here with you. Now, London Fletcher and Santana Moss are going to be joining me in just a second. But as promised, we want to give you access to what is going on on the field. And since behind me, it is empty, getting set for tomorrow, where we hope Friday you will be coming on out here. Make sure you do go register so you can watch the team live and in person. Just make sure you hydrate because it's pretty hot out here. Not as hot in the bubble, and that is exactly where we find London and Santana. This is your Field Pass presented by FedEx, where now meets next. Uh, what are you guys looking for today as it's a restoration day? One, thanks, Julie. So, London, right now, you know, and I'm pretty sure I don't have to say this to you, but to the audience that's watching, you know, they don't understand how important it is to have one of these days. Yes, you get a day where you get to chill, but what's important, too, is you get a chance to walk through some of these things on special teams. And you don't know you don't normally get a lot of the starters playing special teams, but you can see right here to now they're going over the kickoff team, and you see a couple of guys that we're probably going to be depending on throughout the year. Absolutely, and, and you know you think about this, the kickoff coverage is so important. I mean, Santana, you return kicks, so you mm -hmm. know, you if you got a, a group of guys that come down there, they stay in their lanes and are able to swarm to the football, it sets the defense up. Yeah. If you think about it, this is the first defensive snap of the series. Mm -hmm. So me as a defensive player, I want those guys to go down there, get a tackle inside the 20 yeah. or inside the 25-yard line because it makes it that much more difficult for an offense to be able to drive 80 yards and 75 yards consistently. And it also plays a big part in the field position a game. A real big part of it. And you're looking at it right now. I had to see it because I, I see I see a couple of guys that we watch make plays on the defensive side and the offensive side. You got Reed sitting right here. You got Cam Sims. That's a receiver that the more he can do, the better his chances of being you know being on the field as a receiver. You have Diami Brown on the other side, Ben Saints Juice. All these guys are young guys that we know that that has you know big roles on the offense and defense. But you see them right now on the first kickoff team. Hey, what I love though. There's a lot of burgundy jerseys. And, 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 <laughs> and for you. for us, our group right now, our team right now, burgundy jerseys are being worn by the defensive by the players. Yep. You got a, you got a bunch of burgundy jerseys out there, linebackers, backup defensive ends, couple defensive back, and you mentioned Cam Sims. Cam Sims, six foot five, yeah. about two hundred and thirty pounds. That's a big he's guy. A, he's a rare breed right now for our receiver position, and you want to see a guy like that. And I'm not saying it just because I like him. You know, I might, you know, folks might say, Tanner, you're a little biased because he wears the 89. But before he wore that number, I was always a fan just of having that big body as a receiver. You know, you have so many guys with the same stature. You want to have that one guy that can really, you know, make a difference and be, be used in a different situation. If you think about this, uh, I see a couple of rookies out there now. I see Cole Turner, one of the rookies, uh, Brian Robinson, a rookie backup uh, running back. This is for a guy. If you're a backup guy or a guy who's on a on a bubble 
so to speak, of making a team. The fastest way to make a football team is be a special team. No That's question. how I made it in the National Football League. I was an undrafted guy mm -hmm. out of Division three school, and the reason that I made the team was because of my play on special teams, mm -hmm. going down there running, you know, like my hair was on fire, trying to make a play on kickoff return or punt return. This, this is going to be a great opportunity for those bubble guys to make a, make a football team. No question. And folks will never even imagine that London Fletcher, who we, <laughs> who we should hopefully one day see in the Hall of Fame as one of the, you know, greatest middle linebackers that played this game, especially, you know, for the Washington, you know, franchise era, to say he got his first chance of being on the special teams. They don't know how important that is because they look at football and they say, okay, offensive, defensively. No, the special teams has an integral role in what we do. You know when it comes to wins and losses so that's big time buddy yeah absolutely and what, what what these guys are doing right now is they're trying to time up their um the kickoff in terms of joy sly and how he he approaches the football making sure they're not starting before they're allowed to because we don't want a penalty yeah <laughs> that's that's one of the things that they're working on really and and that's the f first fundamental aspect that coach kazar is doing hey making sure you don't your own size not not starting before you're allowed to in terms of joy slide kicking the football getting off getting off topic a little bit when it comes to what they're doing on the field do do you think back and remember the times when you wasn't being used on the special teams right now and this period because i remember this period <laughs> you know you might find a guy like me and you over there on the sideline <laughs> and we're talking about something totally different because we know we don't have to worry about this part of the Man, game uh, what i would try to do is I would ask the special teams coach, do you, do you really need me? Do I really need to be out here? <laughs> because if I don't need to be out here, I'm going to get off my feet. Exactly. I'll I, I, I tell you this. When I was playing in Buffalo and Greg Williams was the head coach. Oh, I remember Greg. If, we didn't, if you weren't on the special teams, you weren't a core special teams guy, you didn't have to go to the special teams wow. practice or the special teams meetings. Wow. You're talking about big time uh, – the ability to get off your feet, bomb. We had an RV up at practice, mm -hmm. and we go into the RV. A bunch of the veteran guys, quarterbacks, hang out. Some of the quarterbacks would actually go and play golf. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> but you know, with Dan Smith, Dan was a guy that you know um, uh, he wanted us to come in uh, here, and he wanted guys that even went on the special teams to really see what's going on, because he wanted the guys on special teams to have that pressure of your peers. And the guys that's counting on you to see whether you're doing your job or not, and 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 I I love that about Danny. He was he would always make sure that those special teams meeting was full with the whole team, so we can really see you know what guys going doing, and so these guys can have the that accountability you know uh, factor you know play a big part in their game, like because you don't want to be letting the guy down, and they're going to see you here on film doing your job. Yeah, ha yeah, absolutely right. And Right now, you see Tressway out there with the kickoff coverage group, and this is them practicing the kickoff after a safety. So mm -hmm. say we, we get a safety or they, the uh, opponent gets a safety. Now we have to punt the kickoff. Yeah. Hopefully we don't have to uh, – we don't see Joe, uh, Tressway out there. Yeah, we definitely you know, kicking, see Kicking that. off because that means the other team got a safety on us. Um, but you got to go through these things. You have to prepare. You have to be ready for all those types of situations. As they huddle on the sidelines, you you will hear them calling out the first. I think they're going to switch to kickoff return. I, I believe that's just the way that they they sh uh, shift the gears. I believe they're about to go to the kickoff return unit, Santana. You know a little bit about kickoff return. Yeah, I remember it, man. You know what's so crazy is that um, I remember earlier in my career as a um, a rookie, after I got off my knee injury because I missed like the first twelve games because I hurt my knee in in training camp. And the first role I had was just kickoff, kickoff return and uh, punt return. And I remember playing the Raiders. And one of the guys that played with me at UM, he was a tight end. He didn't make it into the league as a, you know, a starter. So he played kickoff. And we playing the Raiders. And I got the kickoff return. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fast guy. But at yeah. the time, I didn't have confidence in my legs because I'm just getting back into the thing. And I just went downhill and lowered my shoulder into him. <laughs> my girl Fletcher. I remember him on the bottom of the pile. He said, Tanner, what you doing bulldozing through us like this? And I said, bro, I just knew that. Y'all going to hit me, so I'm going to bring right, it first. Right. And that was just, the, strike that was just first. my mentality. I'm going to strike first. I'm in a different ball game. I'm in a different league right now. I can't be sitting out here as a sitting duck. So I just put my head down and ran through some guys, man. Yeah. But, 
I know you've I know you returned some punts for touchdowns. Did, did you have you returned any only in college? For only in college, man. Only in college. I um you know my my stint as a kick return in the pros didn't last long. So I was fortunate for that because I didn't really like it. Tell you the truth, I was I was more of a punt returner because I can use my you know uh, you know my quickness and stuff like that. But yeah, I didn't I didn't dilly dally with kick return too long. Hey. Believe it or not, Tanner, I got a few kick returns in my career, man. I remember you telling me that. I remember you telling me that. But we gonna make it. We gonna we gonna we gonna stay that for another for <laughs> right. another day. <laughs> right. Back to you, Julie. We appreciate good stuff. You. Thank you guys. Come on back here outside in the heat. I need you. But now we're gonna dive into the defensive backfield and talk about William Jackson III. The DB is in his second season with Washington and is adjusting well to his new defense, one that involves more zone than he's been used to playing in the past. WJ3 is healthy, looking strong at practice, and he dropped by our set to chop it up with London, Logan Paulson, and myself. It is our Pepsi player profile, Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Washington Commanders. William Jackson III joining us now. Sixth season you're going into, second mm -hmm. here with Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, pads are finally on. Mm -hmm. How does this change for you, two days in? It definitely changed. You know, it's getting hotter and hotter once you got the pads <laughs> on. I mean, it's, it's really hot, but other than that, I come from Texas, I'm used to it. Yeah, I know, it's humid down there. Oh, it, yeah. It's kind of gross here. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about last year, you're kind of coming in, learning the defense, mm -hmm. you deal with a couple injuries and a lot of the adjustments mm -hmm. um, of what was asked of you. Mm -hmm. Where are you now? because we're hearing a lot of good things from camp from you early on where are you now in your comfort level of what's being asked and how they want to use you oh, I'm definitely having fun with it I mean I'm I'm having fun I'm smiling every day you know last year it's kind of uh, that I, I was asked to do different things that I've never done before but now I'm comfortable with it the coaches seem happy with it so we just out there having fun and we're putting it all together so what do you attribute that increased comfort level? Is it just being in the system for a year? Is it the communication with your guys? Is it understanding what the coaches want? Uh, it's a little bit of everything. Yeah. You know, you got to get out your own way sometimes. You got to be <laughs> comfortable with uncomfortable, you sure. know, and I had to get out my own way and embrace that. I can play zone too. Like, I'm not just a man guy. Like, I can do zone and I'm showing it out there on the field and having fun with it. You know, he mentioned the communication aspect and you being mm -hmm. mentioned being more comfortable. One of the things that, that happened last year was a lot of communication yeah. breakdowns. And it's just so important for the back end. I don't think you guys can over communicate. Have you noticed the difference this year as far as the communication goes with the, is happening with the secondary and, uh, as opposed to last season? Yeah, we all talking like every play. Like it's not one person talking, it's not two or three, it's everybody talking. And that's what making the game slower for everybody. I mean, I have to say things and get it all the way to the other side of the field and vice versa. So we out there, we pride ourselves on communicating this year because it was a big letdown last year. So we won't have that going into this year. And another thing that, you know, I was talking to the defensive back coach, you said that what makes this defense so hard is your matching concepts post snap. Right. Like, how do you guys get that done? And like, is that just reps time on task or is that also a feature of communication? Uh, it's definitely communication because we got to know if someone going out, someone going in. So we definitely got to communicate. But as far as it being hard, it, it was definitely hard early on because I got to see one, two, and three. Right. You know, I'm not oh, just right. seeing yeah. one person. So it, it was kind of tough coming from a different system to that. Yeah. But now that I'm getting the feel for it, I'm getting more comfortable and it's, it's paying off. Like what to do with your eyes, right? Yeah, like, yeah. It's all about it. eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. yeah, for sure. One of, the, one of the great things about this time of year in training camp is one-on-ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Running backs versus linebackers, yeah. defensive backs versus wide receivers. And, you know, sometimes the drill is kind of skewed towards the offensive guys. Yeah, yeah. What are you talking about, Come on, man. Yeah, yeah that, that, dr that drill is skewed towards the offensive guys. And you're going against either Terry McCorn or Jahan Dotson. What has that competition been like for you the first two days of training camp with the pads on? Oh, it's been fun because I love it. I mean, I came from a man-to-man -man situation. So that, that's like right up my alley. So I, I love doing it. I mean, I embrace that that period and then come back again and we do something different but them guys are great guys man they're gonna do some great things for it this year and they're making me better every day can i ask you we know what we're gonna get from terry mclaurin of course that's why they paid him the contract that they did but dodson right now everybody's really kind of high yeah, on the rookie yeah. coming in where is he from going up against them in these drills where is his game going to be most effective for us I can't really speak on that. That's for the coaches. I have nothing okay. to do with that. I have nothing to do with that. But for what I'm saying, he's explosive. He can run, and he's a first round pick for a reason. How does he challenge you as a route runner? I think that's the thing that you know, like everyone says, oh, he's running routes. Everyone's a slant. Everyone's a comeback. But yeah. does he do something special that makes it challenging to cover? I mean, he got his own thing. He do. I mean, he's a smaller guy. He's shifty, so he can get in and out of breaks real fast. And 
I, I actually like going against that because taller guys is pretty easier for you, but when you're going against smaller guys, speed, right? yeah, it, it definitely have to make you lock in and be on your A game. Absolutely. This this year, you know, Benjamin St. Juice, he's going to be playing mm. the nickel, mm. and you mentioned covering uh, quicker, shiftier guys. When you move inside and you play that slot wide receiver, it's it's it's, it's just different yeah. for him. How has he looked at that position so far in training camp? I mean, he looked great. I mean, he actually looked confident doing yeah. it. You know, he, he came in with the right mindset. I mean, he knew what he, what he was going to have to do to get on the field. And I think he embraced it. And I think he's doing really well, if you ask me. I mean, he turned the tape on. You see him making plays. And look like he's having fun with it. Is there a receiver that gives you the toughest matchup in the NFL? A guy that you're like, man, this guy really brings the best out of me. No. 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 You're better than everybody. I don't feel like that. I mean, so you you line up, you line up against Julio Jones at his prime. You're like, yeah, I'm not even sure. I'm an athlete, man. I I just, I'm gonna go compete. I mean, may the best man win, but I'm not gonna say nobody. So, so. One thing you mentioned going against guys <laughs> and covering Julio Jones, whoever, the real the, the Andre, yeah. whoever the guy may be, you're watching film of these guys and you're going into into a game with a game plan. Do you would you prefer, hey coach, let me get up, play press man to man on these guys, challenge guys, as opposed to you mentioned learning how to play off and those types of things. You ideally you would rather be up in that guy's face and and or would you rather play off or, or mix up the technique? I mean, being a guy's face is all I was used to. I mean, since Little League, uh, high school, college, that's all I'm used to. Like, I never had to really learn zone. So I, I commend the coaches on bringing me here so I can actually get that off me that I'm just a man-to-man guy I can play zone, too. Jeez, man. I mean, the, the courage it takes to line up on an island with one of those guys. I mean, you're just built different, man. Yeah, who Mentally built deal? different. I mean, I mean, who knows the real deal? I mean, everybody in the league is good. But you yeah, can't absolutely. go in there with the mindset of, oh, I'm going to have a tough day today. Yeah. You got to go in there with the right mindset and make the best man win. Absolutely. We talk about that all the time. What makes the difference between a great athlete and the one that just really excels out there? And it is the mindset. Because you're, all, you're yeah. all at this point of your careers and being to this level. We know yeah. you're studs. Uh, we look forward to you further growing into this defense mm-hmm. for the defense taking further steps and mm-hmm. uh having some fun out there we, we everybody loves those one-on-one drills oh, it's, a fun. Fun. it's a lot of fun they put the offense they, they, they <laughs> not the offense. so don't go posting all these out of posts and uh it's I, not for us. i used to well it's, it's crazy how as soon as the fans come in first play they're deep doing ball. a deep ball you you, first give, play. The fan, give the fans what like, they want and that's exactly that's what, what they do. do yeah we like we like the sexy plays but for the record it's for offense. Yeah. It's not <laughs> Absolutely. Defense. There you go. Willow, keeping it straight, keeping us straight. Thanks for joining us Thank today. Thank you so much. Thanks, sir. So let's take a look at the numbers that Willow, WJ3, William Jackson III, has put up a couple of nicknames for him. He was hoping for more um, last season with Washington, but in his career, he does have five interceptions. He told me going into last year, playing behind this defensive front, he was wanting five interceptions on the season alone. Maybe this year, as he feels a little bit more confident and comfortable playing in this system and what's being asked of him. Uh, back here on set now, out of the bubble, in the heat. It's a good 91 degrees, feels like 100 up here. London Fletcher, Santana Moss with me. Um, First off, before we get into the secondary and the performance of William Jackson the third, I, how important is a day like today, where they are in the bubble, they're getting a recovery day? It's extremely important. If you think about it, they, the guys have been practicing for seven straight days. It's extremely hot out here. Yeah. Their their bodies are sore. It's um, you no know, time for them to recover. I know for a guy like Santana receiver, your muscles the hamstrings, things like that. It's different between being in, in shape and being in football shape. So you have to get acclimated to that. I, I think it's a great idea to get those guys recovering. I think tomorrow you'll have a better practice because guys have this day mm-hmm. to recover. Now, since he told you how important it is to have those days, we didn't have a lot of those days. <laughs> right. <laughs> so recovery days, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. But no, I, trust me, I tip my hat off to the guys who plan now to get a chance to. You know, have these accommodations. Um, me and London was just talking about our, our few years and our early years going through tra- uh, uh, training camp, two a days, pass on both practices, uh, brutal times out there in the sun. But I think it's great going forward because the game has changed so much and these guys do have a lot of wear and tear on them that we even mm-hmm. took, you know, that took part in our, our, you know, our early years. But it's great that they have that now because you will see a better outcome when it comes to that play the next day and even going forward throughout the season. 
I always hear guys when you had those two a days a little envious that these guys have it like a cakewalk yes. now. Yeah, you gotta man. wait to put the pads on. You can only have them on once. Their second practice in a day is a walkthrough in the bubble. Um, but soft. you know, it's it's <laughs> you, know, you go out there and show them how it's done. Uh, it is important to make sure they take care of their bodies so they can have very effective and efficient practices. Yeah. Uh, of course, tomorrow, Friday, we'll actually be live here and you have the chance to make sure you go register that you're out here as practice as well because you like the fans out there. It makes a difference. Um, so hopefully fans will be out here for that. Let's talk about uh, Willow, um, William Jackson the third last season. You know, he said he's used to playing man. He had a little bit of an adjustment going into zone. London, let me start with you there. On um, now that he says he feels a little bit more comfortable with it and confident, what should we expect from him? Well, you you expect a better better version of uh, William Jackson because when you play a certain way, a certain style, your whole career, and probably in college. He was always a man-to-man -man cornerback, and he's up in the face of the uh, receiver, working on his technique, being able to use his long arms, his speed to disrupt routes. Mm -hmm. But when you came into a system, instead of being press man-to-man, -man, they play a lot more off man-to-man, -man, and then a lot more zone defense. And the thing that you have to be when you are playing zone defense, you have to be extremely disciplined in terms of the area that you're mm -hmm. covering. You can't jump routes like you would if you're playing man-to-man -man defense because there is an integrity. Everybody's responsible for an area, and that's an adjustment for a guy who's play, played most of his career in a man-to-man -man style of defense. So I expect a better version of William Jackson his second year in his defense, uh, Santana. You know, you know, I think London hit it dead on the head because I remember last year that, that I was kind of throwing off guard because I'm like, hey, this guy has been following guys around you know, up to this point in his career, so why are we not getting a better outcome? But like he just said, you know, you have to adjust. You have to be able to be comfortable in what you're doing. And it probably was a little, you know, confusing to him at times last year. It, it had to because you saw at times when you're like, man, I expected a little more from this guy and we just didn't see it. So going forward, I'm expecting him to be that guy that we went out there and paid the big money for because I think, I don't think I saw him play at, play at that level and I know he can do it. And, and one of the big things that he has to do now playing more in his own defense is a lot more required from a communication yeah. standpoint. Mm -hmm. When you're a man to man, hey, I got this guy. This yeah. I'm in cat coverage. That's my cat. But when you're playing zone defense, you have to be able to communicate across the board. You get a shallow cross. Of, hey, the guy's coming into mm -hmm. your area. So that that was something I'm sure he had to adjust to as well. And a lot of it we hear them say as well is you have to trust that you're going to pass someone off mm -hmm. and yes. then stay where you're at. Yeah. Um, can you help us understand a little bit of why it is a challenge to go from man to zone? Because to the average person, if you can play man, then it should be simpler to play zone. <laughs> Look, that's a defensive guy. He probably could tell you a little <laughs> more, but that's what I thought. You know, as a receiver, you tell me that I got a guy playing me man to man. I know I'm beating one guy. Then I have zone. Now I know I have to sit into that, that honey spot. You know what I mean? That sweet spot. So when you hear a DB say, well, I played man for the last four, four years, now I'm playing zone, you will automatically think that it's easier. But, mm -hmm. you know, like what London was just talking about, you have to have trust in your partner knowing that now it's just not on me. It's on me letting that other guy know that, hey, we in such and such. Like I see guys all the time when we in certain formations, you see DBs playing tricks like, hey, we got, we're going to switch. We're going to do this and that. So it's all about communication. It's all about having a feel of that scheme because if you don't have a feel for it, I saw plenty of times last year when a guy would beat someone deep and they're looking at each other like, Oh, someone let someone down or they didn't give that communication call. The big difference is when you're playing a lot of man-to-man, -man, you're studying the guy more than anything. You're mm -hmm. studying your matchup, especially, hey, you say you used to follow guys. I got X, I got Julio Jones, or I have DeAndre Hopkins. So you're studying him all week. What you have to do more so when you're playing a lot more zone, you have to study concepts and routes mm -hmm. and how the offenses are trying to attack that particular zone. You're a cover two corner. You can't jump a five yard flat route when they're running a seven yard, uh, I mean a 15 or 20 yard corner route by mm -hmm. Santana. You jump that that five yard route and the offense is hitting Santana for that 15 yard game behind you. You have to be more disciplined. You have to understand and study the concepts that the offense is trying to attack you with. Let, let me switch over to a different player now, Benjamin St. Juice. We've been seeing him at times um, playing that nickel position, the Buffalo nickel, um, using him differently. They like his length. I mean, he's a tall defender as well. What are you seeing from him so far, Santana, in that spot? You know, I was big on him last year, and I was uh, a bit disappointed when I heard he went out, you know, um, prematurely in the mm -hmm. season, and, and, he, and he couldn't play no more because of concussions. But you have to make sure that, you know, we stay ahead of those things because we know so many guys have been dealing with him now, you know, post-career. 
Um, I see big things still. Uh, you know, one of the questions I had with London, okay, we hear Buffalo nickel. You know, I'm, I'm used to hearing the safeties coming up, playing that position and, and being more involved in the run game. So will it be a difference when, 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 when we have that Buffalo uh, nickel position and have a guy like Benjamin St. Juice, will it be, you know, primarily in the passing game or would it be both? Who knows? But regardless, having him on the field, I think this is the second year. I've seen some things already on the field out here in the practice field that has raised my eyes to believe that this guy's ready to play. He's ready to go out there and, and take on the road. And we might be seeing a lot more of him other than just playing the guy inside, being on the outside as well. Yeah, you're you talking about him playing the, the Buffalo nickel position. When I think Buffalo, I think that big. beef, big yeah, nickel. Big and, and, and that's what Landon Collins played for them. He was a big nickel, so to speak, or he was a hybrid linebacker. Yeah. When you're in that box, which you are a part of the box now as a as a mm -hmm. as an inside player, you're gonna have to take on linemen. You're gonna have to take on bo uh, blockers. You're gonna have to be able to fit in the run game. Can he do that consistently at the uh, inside spot? Now, there's times where if the offense is in an obvious passing situation, he'll play well. He'll be fine. But if it's first and ten, are they gonna run out? You know, him and, and playing. Hey, this is a big nickel situation. Mm -hmm. They got two tight ends mm -hmm. on the floor on the field. Are they going to put him out on that field and say, all right, can he hold up against the run as well? We've been seeing him kind of rotate with Cameron Curl. Cam Curl says he likes being up there, going up against the run, but of course wants to be able to drop back as well and try to get those INTs. But it is, Buffalo Nickel is something that Coach Rivera stresses is going to be very important to this defense. We'll see just how they decide to use that and use the rotation as well. Okay. Practice Saturday uh, is a big one, and we want you to be out there at FedEx Field August 6th. Head coach Ron Rivera is going to be chatting to you, telling you why to get hyped for the season. Of course, we will be there as well, letting you know what you're looking at and why it's important. Make sure you register and you are on out for free tickets. Head over to commanders.com for more information. Now, talking about the head coach Ron Rivera, well, we put a mic on him. This is always must-watch TV, so here you go. Just real quick, again guys, pay attention to hydration. It's going to get warmer today than it was yesterday. Make sure you guys are taking in your fluids. Pay attention to that, all right? Second thing, don't forget what the intent is. It's about winning. It's about learning how to win, knowing how to win, and winning. That's the bottom line. Everything we do is about getting better. Any questions? All right, here we go. Team on three. One, two, three. Let's go to work, team. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Morning, Kelvin. How you doing today? Good. Good, good. What's up, Terry? How you doing, man? Good. I see that rolling on your wrist. I've had this. What do you mean? Dude? Hey, had hey, this. It must be shining super crazy. Hey. There you go. I've had this. Now, what you doing? You get something to eat this morning? All right. All right, BR. Take care of yourself. Just talking about leading the league in interception. I think myself, some. We caught the ones we should have last year. Where's Chris at? Hey, Chris. Where's Chris Harris at? Chris! Come here, come here, come here, come here. Well, just so you know, I was, I was telling Bobby, I came in last last night, I went back and looked at the MOPs, because you were talking about leading the league in interception. I said, well, so we can cut the ones that we had last year. We'd have led the league again. I'm being serious. Go back and look at that. We did have some drops. I know, but if you look at it, you sit there and go, wait a minute. I mean, I asked Bobby. Bobby said, yeah, I should have had seven last year. Yeah, Bobby dropped. I know. I know. So I was riding them a little bit, and then they started laughing about Chris. And I said, oh, oh. So then I called you over. You come running. They said, oh, that hurt Chris. <laughs> I'm just telling you what they said. I ain't making anything up. All right. <clears throat> Tell you what, you guys really want to impress me. Let's even get under this little one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, AG's the only one that got a shot at that. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, I'll right, show you, coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how you'd have to bend much, huh? That's it. Use that personality. I can't believe you didn't think I was smart. I got like 20 pictures from the team and about six of them I was getting your coach Six out of 20. That's three out of 10. Now, if we were playing Major League Baseball, you'd make a gazillion dollars. Ooh. Ah, there we go. There we go. All right, hey, good tip from yesterday, same as yesterday. Keep your heads out of the drill, play with your hands. DBs, defer to the receivers unless you got it. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, 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 hey. Play with our hands, play with our hands, play with our hands, play with our hands, play with our hands. 
Play with our hands. Keep your tempo right. Keep your tempo good. Keep your tempo good. Be smart. Be aware of the quarterback now. Keep your heads out of it. All right, good. Here we go. Team on three. One, two, three. Team. We love it when Coach gives us that access, and we're glad we can bring it to you. Now, don't go anywhere, because coming up next, we're talking about rookie tight end Cole Turner. Could he be one of Carson Wentz's top red zone targets? We'll discuss. Now, the team is in the bubble today, but tomorrow they'll be back on the field, and we want to make sure that you are there catching all of the action. So make sure you register to come on out. The players want you here. Now, this is Command Center Camp Coverage. Don't go anywhere. We're back in 60 seconds. Introducing Nitro Pepsi. Smooth, creamy, delicious. Another rock and roll weekend. Burgers. Better with Pepsi. And we are back on Command Center Camp Coverage presented by the inaugural Commander's Fan Crew setting sail March 26, 2023. Reserve your spot at www.commandersfancruise.com. Time for some training camp storylines presented by Bank of America, the official bank of the Washington Commanders. One of the biggest storylines so far in camp has been around Curtis Samuel getting back on the field. After being held out on Tuesday, he was out there in full pads on Wednesday practicing with the team. Head coach Ron Rivera has said this is all part of the process to get him back into football shape and keep him on the field this season. Seeing him back out there was definitely a good sign for sure. Kendall Fuller is a leader in the defensive backfield. The veteran cornerback has been a steady presence every day at camp. Fuller is part of the defense that's looking to improve on their performance last season. He also said he's embracing his role as a mentor to some of the younger guys here. Rookie Cole Turner is turning some heads at camp. His big frame makes him a big target for Carson Wentz. Should be in the mix with John Bates until Logan Thomas can return and even then could be a regular in the red zone. He met with the media to discuss his progression so far. I think I've done okay, you know. I've done pretty well with uh, not making too many mental errors. You know, that was my main goal coming from such a simple offense I had in college to this was I really wanted to focus on understanding the playbook and doing my assignment right every time. I still think there's a lot of room for improvement, but luckily I've had a lot of guys who have helped me out, like like Logan, Logan Thomas, and John Bates, and Samus, and Alex as well. Of all, they've all taken me under their wing a little bit and helped me out. So I've been lucky to have those group of guys around me. I think I'm me personally. I think I'm just the type to where, you know, every year you're going to go through ups and downs. Every year is going to have its own challenges. You know, I mean, we can have a good year this year, but that doesn't mean we're we're not going to have some down times where to where we're going to have to you know, fight ourselves out of the hole, you know, and that, that just comes with football. That's a part of the game. Um, and that's why you love it. That's why you respect it so much because each and every year, I don't care what team you are, what player you are, you're going to have times to where you got to dig yourself out of the hole. And, uh, you know, we can have a good year this year, but that don't mean that we won't have times where we'll have to dig ourselves out of a hole and stuff like that. But, you know, you work hard now to try to keep yourself out of a hole, but it's just the uh, nature of the business. So that's something that we're just preparing our, ourselves for now. I think across the board, it was a good day for both sides of the ball. There were a lot of good things that happened um, in terms of development out there on the field. Offensively, probably the, the, the biggest thing that's changed, and, and you know, it, it's, it's, funny, it's funny, people don't realize it, but when, when you're in pads, it's a whole different mentality for the front, for the offensive line. You know, they don't, they, they don't have to catch because they can now strike. Because again, when, you're, when you don't have pads on, You've got to be smart about how you make contact and how little contact you should make. So it doesn't look good as far as the offense is concerned. But now things are balanced out, things are even, and now you can see really some of the good things that we're looking for as coaches. 
Diving deeper into these storylines, you just heard head coach Ron Rivera talking about kind of emotions getting hot. And when practice isn't going and guys aren't as focused on it and that they get frustrated because it's not what they want to be running. You know, you got to pay attention to be in there. Um, but when it is hot out here and it is the grind and emotions are going hot, how do you balance that as a player? Well, it's, it's tough. I will say that, especially during this time of, of year. You finally got the pads mm -hmm. on. Emotions are going to ramp up. The physicality of the, yeah. of the practice is going to ramp up and guys are going to get the best of you. And there's going to be a lot of trash talk that takes place. But you also have to understand we want the physicality. We want that type of intensity and competitiveness and practice, but not at the sake of where well, we have a bunch of fights getting done because you can't fight in the, in the real game. You get kicked out. Oh, yeah. So you have to still be able to ha keep your poise even when you're a little bit, uh, it, it gets a little bit testy out there at Santana. You just got to be smart. I think one of the main things is just being smart. You're going to get a guy too that, uh, knows how to practice and I think it's it's a, a, a job for all the veterans and for the guys who consider the OGs to basically groom the other guys to know how to go out here and practice amongst their teammates you know when we get into those competition battles now that's when things are going to ramp up a little bit and then you're going to expect the guy to get hit a certain way but he should expect that now when we're not supposed to get hit don't hit nobody and we should have a good practice but it's always going to be a knucklehead so it's going to be a couple of them. It's going to be a, a few guys out there that's trying to make a name for themselves that's going to go out there and do something unordinary. And them, them the guys that normally gets into the brawls, but we let them brawl because you know what? You might not be on this team if you're doing yeah. something that we didn't ask you to do. It's, it's usually an offensive lineman oh, is or it? a defensive yeah. back trying yeah. to make a, make a name for uh, themselves. I'm not sure who that knucklehead would be here to this team. I, I, I feel like coaches <laughs> done a pretty good job to make sure that they don't bring those guys in. Uh, it's still as early on in camp, um, but you do have to keep the emotions in check as things do heat up. Talking about things heating up, Kendall Fuller was talking about how last season the defense, there were such high expectations, and they were humbled. Uh, they did not perform to the level that we were expecting, wanting, and needing from them to, to be effective and to be successful. So far early on, they're saying that things are a little bit different now. The secondary is communicating more. They're working in sync. They have more chemistry. They kind of understand where each other's going to be and trusting each more. Should they play to their potential, where is this defense? This defense can be and should be a dominant unit. They have the necessary playmakers on every level of the field, whether it's from the defensive line, we know how dominant they can be. I really expect an uptick in the production by Jamin Davis and Cole Holcomb. And then the secondary, those guys are showing up and making plays this, this, um, this training camp so far. It's all about them understanding week to week, play, play by play, day in, day out. We have to go through the process of getting better, challenging mm -hmm. ourselves to get better, knowing your assignments, communicating, and things like that. And if they're not a dominant unit, they only have themselves to blame because yeah. they have the talent to yeah. do that. They, they do. Um, and, and let me ask you then now about Cole Turner, mm -hmm. um, seeing him kind of go up against this defense. He's looking early. He's looking yeah. good early on. And we know that Carson likes to target yeah. the tight end. We heard him talking about kind of just adjusting to life in the NFL, Santana. I think that's big for him. Being a young guy, you want to be able to have that experience of going against the guys that quote unquote, you're going to probably have to play against if you're thrown out there and you're playing early in this year. So uh, it's great to see our defense really get after him. And it's great to see him come down with some catches and, and starting to make a name for himself. But it's it's going to be big for his mental because one, you're young. And when you start feeling that, feeling yourself making those plays on the ones, now you're going to expect that. You're going to have those expectations amongst every practice you go out there that I have to do something. And it's only going to make him better and make us better because we're going to need that, that guy that's going to be able to spill or, or or make up for some of that time that Logan Thomas might miss. And as even Doc Walker was saying, he can be a red zone buster because he is tall. He can go up there and bring those uh, balls down, which is exactly what you want in those situations. Okay, folks, we have you covered throughout training camp every single day here on our streams, but also on Command Center. Do not miss it. You can join myself, Logan Paulson, and 8 to the 9 Santana Moss every day for your Commander's Fix, highlights, analysis, and inside access you're not getting anywhere else. You can see every episode on our YouTube channel and on commanders.com. You can also check us out on NBC Sports Washington weekdays, 5.30 and 10 p.m. Now let's see how our guys having some fun off the field at Fair Deck Connect 4. You wanna go? Let's go. I like red, so let me go. I like red, man. I'll let you get it. See, see, we got something coming. Yeah. I'm gonna let you go. Uh, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Oh man, it's about to get really bad for you. Come 
Curtis, do you like that? I'm blaming that Come on. Come on. That was your fault because you the one made me go out there. I saw Julie. He's trying to I was walk trying out. to go in the building and eat lunch. And Julie's like, Come on, Tan, just do it. It's mm -hmm. one time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, All right, I'll do it. <laughs> what y'all don't know is that video actually, it took like, it was like a 15 minute game of, it was the longest game of yeah. Connect Four I've ever seen. Um, yeah. Since you lost, London and I are just enjoying the yeah. games here. Yeah, you don't get This is, this is what happens yeah. for the losers. They don't get to cool off. Uh, we're not done with the show, though. Uh, when we come back, we're going to be talking about Carson Wentz, how he's adjusting to his new team here at practice, and what can we expect when he takes the field for the season opener. That's next. We'll be back in just one minute. You can make it. We will. This one's for every NFL fan whose fan cave is more like a fan corner of a guest room closet. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. You fired up the grill for one hot dog? Seriously? Hot dogs. Better with Pepsi. <sighs> back to Command Center Camp Coverage presented by the inaugural Commander's Fan Crew setting sail March 26, 2023. Reserve your spot at www.commandersfancruise.com. Well, fans have been active on social media. Here's a look at some of the posts with the hashtag HTTC. Hail to the Commanders. Now, for those that have come out, of course, you get the chance to get autographs from the players. And we want you out here on Friday. Make sure you register. You are in full force and you are supporting your team. We are opening up. It's time now to go camping, though, with team reporter Zach Selby. I'm not sure if he has s'mores, but I certainly hope he has some cool lemonade. Hello and welcome back to Camping Out with Zach Sub, where I'm emerging out of my tent at the bright and early hours of the morning to give you all the information you would ever hope and dream to know about the Washington Commanders as they go through their 2022 training camp. And I got the chance to talk to not one, not two, but three people today. One, we got to talk to Taylor Almer from the Washington Spirit, who were here today hanging out with some of the some of the special teams players. We got a chance to talk to Annie Agar from Bally Sports and Scott Abraham, Big Scott from ABC7. Let's go We'll see what they had to say. Now as we have Taylor Almer from the Washington Spirit. Taylor, you guys were out here with some of your teammates, you know, just hanging out. What, what, what was that experience like? Uh, it was awesome. They were gracious enough to let us tour the facility, which was such a cool experience. Watch training, come out on the field after, see their inner workings of the facility, and we had a great time. So yeah, speaking of a good time, you guys are out here doing a little bit of a skills challenge. And I mean, you know, kicking soccer balls off, you know, a tee and you know, all that stuff. What was that like? It was a lot of fun. Surprisingly, kicking the football might have been a bit easier than the soccer ball, which... Really? Yeah, it could have been a hot take, 
but it was a lot of fun. Uh, the guys were super nice that were stayed after with us. Very thankful that they took the time out of their day to do that, and we had so much fun. Now we have a little bit of a treat for you. We have Annie Agar from Valley Sports, and you do a little bit of everything, honestly. I mean, but you know, you're out here hanging out with the commanders for training camp. What are your expectations for the team? Um, I think it's going to be a lot more passing. You guys are going to look to, and it's going to be spread out because you have Dotson, you have Hurt, hopefully Curtis Samuel if he's healthy, um, and then and Terry McLaurin. So I think it'll be a spread out offense. I don't, I don't think you're going to have to target McLaurin as much, you know, deep. And I, I'm really hoping for big fantasy points from all three of them. I think that trio of receivers is going to be so sick. Yeah. Deadly. Next with us, we have Scott Abraham. Big Scott from ABC. Now I got to ask you, so does, do, yeah, does, does, does everyone still call you Big Scott? Or do you, do you say no, only Chase Young can call me Big Scott? Well, uh, <laughs> Chase Young gave me that wonderful nickname, and uh, it, it's grown among the media brethren. So uh, a couple of guys refer to me as Big Scott, and even Chase Young, when he first saw me first day at camp, he said Big Scott. So I'm cool with it because Chase Young, he's cool, and he gives me Big Scott. I'm gonna go with it. I mean, Carson Wentz looked a lot better, I think, today. Um, you know, had really sharp, you know, last second half of practice. What have you seen? Have you, have you seen the, all the some of the accuracy things that uh, you know he he's shown recently? Certainly, it's a mixed bag, good, bad, and ugly, which you can expect with the quarterback learning a new system, a new scheme. Remember, you had one system in Philadelphia, had another system in Indianapolis, and now here. So this is his third different system in, in three years. So that, that's a lot to take on as a quarterback. But when the pads came on the last couple of days, you could see um, – him becoming more comfortable in the offensive line, giving him more time uh, as they can hold their own against the D-line. I, I think the key is for, for Carson is mistake-free football. We, you don't want to see those interceptions. You don't want to see those drive killers. He's a smart player. He, he'll take that check down to McKissick. He'll take that check down to AG, find his tight ends. You don't have to always blow the top off of the defense with a deep ball. He can do that. He has a powerful arm, but I think you're going to get a very smart veteran-like quarterback in Carson Wentz. Uh, in my opinion, it's an upgrade from what, what Washington's had the last couple of years. Time for today's Fresh Takes presented by Safeway, the official supermarket of the Washington Commanders. And you can listen to Zach's full interviews with the beat reporters on our podcast, Going Camping with Selby. And you can listen wherever you get your other commands that are podcasts. So, Santana London back with me. We just heard the Fresh Takes. Let's talk a little bit about Carson Wentz. Um, what he, we're going to hear and actually chat with him when it comes tomorrow to practice. So excited to get to that. But what does he need to do to get going in the right direction, Santana? I think slowly just improve every day. You know, I think one of the things about playing the quarterback position, uh, we expect those guys to be able to just lead, you know, outright. You know, uh, one of the things that's interesting about his situation is that the last two years he happened to learn something new, whether it's the scheme or just the guys that he's working with. So uh, that's tough. I remember playing with uh, D. Nav. He came in, they just threw the book at him. And Donovan was like, look, I know I did what I did in Philly, but it's hard to come into a new situation and just learn the book and try to learn and get familiar with everybody around me. So every day is going to be one of those days that he can kind of like check off and say, I've grown a little bit. I've grown whether it's in the classroom or out here on the field with the guys. For him, it's, it's going to be about mastering the playbook, and that's what Santana's getting at. And the reason why it's about mastering the playbooks, when he knows the playbook like the back of his hand, knowing the protections, the checks, and you know, getting the offense in a better play based on what the defense is presenting to him, it will also allow him to play with confidence and lead with confidence because those guys, they're looking at him. He's the, he's the elder statesman, so to speak. He's the leader of that offense. But if you're not confident, it's hard for you to be the leader that they need you to be. But when he knows that offense like the back of his hand, then we'll see the best version of Carson. You talk about him being the elder statesman. He's often out there saying, like, man, these kids, these kids are, he's a good 10 years older than a lot of them trying to relate as well. But, of course, that's of the utmost importance. How much do you think we'll see of him in the preseason, London? You know, I, probably I would think with it only being three preseason games, I, it wouldn't surprise me if he played a quarter in the first uh, preseason game or close to it and, and maybe even a half in the second preseason game and not at all in that third preseason game, getting him, making sure he's healthy and ready to go week one against Jacksonville. Yeah, I'm going to be interested in just to see how they do everything. Like he's, he spoke on just, you know, some things have been different throughout his career when it comes to preseason. So uh, it's all about what Ron feel that's needed, you know, and especially if you're not getting it, getting to see it in practice, I'm sure they're going to want to see a little bit of at least 10 plays a game here and there. All right, we'll see.
soon. It's coming. I can't believe it. It's going to be here in just about a week or so. Uh, okay, so the guys also, when they're not on the field, they like to play golf. We know Rivera likes to play golf. We know you like to play golf. So we're going to send you guys out here to the putting green. Tana has got a golf tournament coming up for charity. We're going to see who does the best here at this little chipping contest. We had the players as well doing this. Why don't you just ask this. me and I'll tell you. London's, London's who's, going. who's going to be better then? London's going since, to win this Since one. Tana's not a golf, I'm going to get Tana, I'm going to give you the one with the, the better grip. And you want me to go first or you yeah, want to go first? Yeah, you go ahead first. All right. Let's see. I'm going I'm to take this here. I'm going to show them how I come out to the <laughs> I look let's like see, a This is a little major going. chip. A little practice, a little practice chip. Let's see. Oh, that wasn't that great. Let's see. Hey, Tana, it's, it's a little bit different than actually being on I the know, green. I know, I know. I need to get this up in the air a little bit. Let's see what Tana, Tana has the more lofted club, too. Taking practice swings here. <laughs> this is for real. Oh. See, that's what I do. <laughs> he bladed that thing a little bit. Missed he bladed it. Let me see if I can get it in the hole. I, I'm, I'm feeling all right now. Nah. Oh, yeah. that's pretty good. Right. Pretty that's, that's, good. A, that's a gimme right there. That's a good See, thing. There you go. Right. And Tana's got it. And that's with that, we will that's wrap a up this right Man there. Center. Thanks right. for joining hey, us. Y'all. We'll see you again tomorrow live. Carson Wentz will be joining us. And, of course, you can catch every episode on YouTube. See you tomorrow, folks. <laughs>